Welcome to Leading the Follower with your host, Rebecca Benston. Good morning. It's me, Rebecca Benston with Leading the Follower. I apologize for not being able to be here with you yesterday. Um, I've been having multiple computer issues that have made it nearly impossible for me to get anything done, um, which kind of stinks because I had yesterday off and I had all this time and I spent most of that time um, trying to clean off my computer because I ran out of memory, (laughs) Um, mostly because of all the podcasting uh, stuff that I've been doing has been eating up my memory and I hadn't had a chance to dump it off into my um, my other drive and everything, but uh, that's just how it goes when you're working a one-person operation and you're trying to do too many things with not enough resources to do it. Um, but I have taken this time to try and get things together, and hopefully I can get a a nice podcast episode up for you today. We will see. But first, I want to encourage you to stop by the Higher Ground Books and Media website, take a look at our shop, and see if we have anything for you. If you're looking for inspiration, we have lots of great stories and ministry resources over there, things you can use with your small group, um, things you can uh, get for your kids. I have a lot of fun stories for kids over there. Um, So just, um, just take a look and see if there's anything that speaks to you. Um, let's see. Oh, and make sure you subscribe and, um, uh, subscribe to the podcast as well so that you can get regular updates when we have new episodes, uh, when we have different things going on, if we have events and that sort of stuff. I try not to bombard people because I don't want to be the reason that you are stuck in your inbox for hours trying to clean that out. I don't need to send you 20 emails a day to tell you what's going on. Um, I try to make it as concise as possible because I do value your time. Um, and I think that, that everybody should value each other's time like that. So in the interest of that, um, I'm going to start in. I've been really thinking about a lot of different things over the last week or so just trying to gather my thoughts and um, trying to figure out what what direction would be the best <clears throat> and how I can uh, how I can make the most of what God has given me especially when you think about Easter and you're you're looking at um, the ultimate sacrifice you know of Jesus dying on the cross for us. It really seems small. My my contribution really seems small in comparison to what he has done for us. I I can never do enough to deserve that. I can never um I can never measure up to the standard that he has set. Um but what can I do? What how can I how can I honor God? and show appreciation for what he gives me and do my job here <clears throat> as a Christian as someone who wants to help others find God's peace in their lives um it's it's difficult because sometimes i have trouble understanding how to access that peace as well um even as someone who knows and who has studied and and is constantly searching and and looking for ways to um, to use what God has given me, um, I still have days where I get hung up on what's not working and uh, what I'm not doing, and that is that is not where He wants us to be. But He never promised that we wouldn't have days where we just doubt everything that we're doing. Um, he just promised that he would be there for us and that, uh, if we acknowledge him, he takes care of us. Um, and he takes care of us even when we're not doing such a great job of acknowledging him also. So, um, 
But I've been thinking about several things. We, um, we're looking at an administration. <clears throat> I'm talking, this is, I'm going to get slightly political. <clears throat> we're looking at an administration that has just basically been slapping God in the face with, with the things that they have done, the things that they uphold, the things that they've decided are good for our country. Um, and if you don't know what I'm referring to, then I think you might need to step back and maybe read a little bit of the Bible and uh, familiarize yourself with with God's Word a little bit more. Um, <clears throat> if you're not immediately familiar with what I'm talking about, then you've had blinders on. And I'm sorry, but it's just... It's so obvious that the goal of of this administration and several before um, has been to systematically push God out of the picture and to promote things that God would not want them to promote. Um, and, you know, I get the whole separation of church and state, but you can't take God completely out of everything that he creates and we are his creation and so God is there and when you try everything in your power to keep people from seeing him or to keep people from accessing him or to demonize him and um, to devalue what God can do in someone's life um, I'd hate to be you at at your day of reckoning. I would really hate to be the person who has worked so hard to push God out um, because it is not going to be pretty for those people. Um, and what we put up with here on earth as we go through and try to do everything that we're created to do, um, the frustration and the anger and, you know, Everything that we feel when we see someone just completely um, throwing God's word aside and just laughing about all the things that they're doing that don't line up. Um, and laughing at the fact that so many people are on board with it who call themselves Christians. Um, all of that will be dealt with. And um, we don't have to do anything to make that happen. God will already have that on his list of things to do. But it is frustrating as someone who very much wants people to understand how God plays a healing role in your life. Um, it is so hard to do when you have so many people out there pushing you to just create your own real reality and create your own uh, set of rules without thinking twice about what God wants for you. It's just, it's very disheartening and very um, concerning because, you know, I figure, I've always figured if I can reach one person with a podcast or a blog post or something I've written or something I've said when I'm out doing events and things like that, that I'm doing as much as I can do because I'm, I have very little reach with the things that I do. I don't, I don't fall in line with the algorithms. I don't try to do the little tricky things to bring more people to me. Um, I figure I'll just do what I think I should do. And if people hear it, they hear it. If not, well, I'll keep going until I say the right things or I say it loud enough for people to hear me. Um, <clears throat> it is frustrating because it feels like you're spinning your wheels a lot of the time, but, um, that doesn't mean you stop. That doesn't mean you quit trying. It just means you try a little harder and, um, and it's, it's exhausting sometimes, but that's what we have to do. You know, I'm sure it wasn't fun for Jesus when he was going around and trying to teach people about God and 
and help them to understand who he was and um, who he is and what he can do for them and what he does for them, even when they don't ask. Um, I'm sure that was very sad. Um, and he was constantly disappointed, though, you know, I've heard people say that God is not disappointed in us, but it had to be disappointing to try to minister to people who didn't want to be ministered to. I know it is for me. Um, it's kind of like when you try to tell your kid not to do something, you know, when you're raising a kid and, and you're trying to keep them from getting hurt. And the way that you're doing that is you're like, you know, don't do that. That will hurt you. That's going to be a problem, you know? Um, and they go ahead and they do it anyway. How do you feel as a parent when that happens? You feel defeated and, um, it sometimes causes you a lot of excess worry and, and, you know, especially when the main thing that you're concerned with is, is my kid going to be okay? You know, um, can I keep them from harm? And that's, that's all God wants for us is he wants us to live a good life and to point others toward him and to just, you know, not get hurt. But if we do get hurt, he wants us to come back and and help, you know, have him heal us. That's what he wants. That's what I think anyway. My experience with God has been just that, that he tried to tell me what I should and shouldn't do, you know, at various points in my life. And um, sometimes I listened, sometimes I didn't. And whenever I listened, things went a little better. And whenever I didn't listen, things went a little worse. And, um, and I had to learn how to listen to him and how to hear him when everything else was so loud, it didn't want me to. So <clears throat> it's important that we never stop trying to hear him because the voices out there that are trying to get you to stop hearing him are extremely loud and obnoxious and persistent, and they will not stop because they hate themselves and they hate you and they don't they don't care if you ever connect with God or have any kind of a meaningful um, contribution to our society and to our lives. They just want you to like them more than you like God. And that's definitely not the answer. So, <clears throat> um, so if I could say anything to you today, as we head into uh, celebrating Resurrection Day tomorrow, is take some time to get quiet and um, and find a way to like sit with your thoughts, think about all the things that you want to accomplish, think about where they're directly tied to what you feel God wants you to accomplish, and. Um, Try to hear him. Try to really listen for God's voice and hear what he has to say to you and whether or not you're on the right track, how to get back on the right track if you're off track. Um, he's there for you no matter how far away from the tracks you are if you have completely abandoned the notion of being on track. He's still there for you because Anytime you decide to come back to him, he will help you. Um, and you're not always going to get the best information from those who, um, from those who are putting themselves out there as the best source. There are a lot of people out there whose intentions are not 100% pure, as you probably already know. Um, and even people who are putting themselves up as, um, really, really good Christians and really, really good people who will lead you in the right direction. You just have to listen to God 
And if you're listening to him first and foremost, and you tune everything out, even the people who are supposedly good, the people who are, are bad, people who are supposedly bad, um, and listen just for God. You can't go wrong with that. You know, and it may take a while to hear him. It may take lots of concentration. It may take a long time for you to tune back in to him and, and really hear him and understand what he's saying to you. <clears throat> but he is there. So, this Easter, I would just say, make time to hear his voice and uh, make sure you're connected to the right source. And you can let everything else go, every other piece of influence that you've been holding on to. And as long as you're tuned in to what God is saying to you, you will make it. You will be fine. You'll be all right, no matter what happens around you. Um, we don't know what evil things are planned for us. We don't know who is at the heart of these things. We don't know exactly um, what tactics they'll use, but we do know that there is a lot of bad stuff going on out there. And unless you've had your head in the sand, um, you're bound to have seen and heard some of it, at least a little of it, if not a whole bunch of it, that makes you want to just run and hide in a closet somewhere and not hear it. Um, the evil is there, and it is working overtime to make sure that you don't hear God's voice. I want you to put forth 200% or more effort to make sure that you hear that you hear God's voice above everything else. <clears throat> because that's what will protect you. And that's what will help you make a difference in your life and in other people's lives. So that's what's been on my mind. Um, I don't know if this makes sense to anybody out there. But maybe it'll resonate with someone who listens there aren't very many people who listen to this um, this podcast, and that's okay. Like I said, if I reach one person and it makes sense to them, that's fine with me. Eventually, um, it will reach the right person or the right people, and and they will hear it and do with it what they what they can. Um, with that in mind, though, have a very very nice Easter with your family and friends, you know, celebrate the fact that God came back after being tortured, um, after dying for our sins, that he did rise on the third day and um, that he is with us and he will always be with us. And that, uh, he wants to take care of us and keep us safe and healthy and happy. And he loves us more than anything. So keep that in mind and have a happy Easter. God bless you. Thanks for stopping by. Be sure to check out our website and blog. The blog is at www.leading-the-follower.com. Thanks and God bless.